Hey everyone, my name is Brian Matish and I'd like to welcome you to episode number four of Onward Inspiration. Now in episode three, I touched on my general avoidance of photographing people. The more I thought about it, the more I wanna expand on the importance of the human factor, which is what I'm calling this episode. If you're like me, you've likely seen countless photos of those giant blocks of ice well, that's like marooned on the shores of Iceland's Black Sands Beach. I've seen tons of them all my life. So naturally, when I first visited Iceland during the winter and visited that beach, I spent hours photographing these very ice blocks in every angle, every direction imaginable. And after a while, I started losing interest. You know, I was flipping uh, through the photos on the back of my camera's LCD, and I quickly realized that probably I'll never touch 85% of those photos. It's not that they were bad. It's just simply a question of how many photos of ice blocks does anyone need to share? Still, I was with a few photographers and they weren't quite ready to leave to go back to the hotel even though it was freezing, but I could understand that. And that's when it hit me. Instead of packing up my gear, I decided to incorporate the human factor because while I've seen tons of ice block photos, I couldn't really remember seeing photos of people actually engaged in photographing them. So I turned my attention to my friend and fellow photographer, Colby Brown. Now I told him in advance that I was gonna go photograph him just so that I wouldn't scare him. Uh, also, to give him a warning when I needed him to stand still because I was still going to do those longer exposures. And through this change of pace, I came away with some photos that I genuinely feel are different because they give the viewer a glimpse not only in just the icebergs themselves, but how, you know, the experience of actually being there and photographing the icebergs. So with that, let's jump over to the computer and work on editing one of those photos. All right, so this is the photo of Colby that I want to work on. And if you look at it, you can see that there's a bit of a blue cast from the filter that I was using. So that's an easy fix, especially because I was shooting in RAW. I'm just going to take the white bounce dropper from the basic panel in Lightroom and just sample one of the white caps. And you can see we have now a bit of a, just a, a more natural looking photo. And then just a few quick things. I'm gonna increase the overall exposure and bring the white point out just a bit so we get the most of our dynamic range within the single RAW file. And the last thing I'm gonna do before sending this over to On One is I'm gonna crop the photo just a bit because I don't like this uh, little bit of the iceberg. So I'll press R and I'm just gonna drag in from the top right, somewhere around there and uh, that's good. Then I'll scroll down to the lens correction, make sure that my profile correction is enabled and I'll click on level to see what uh, Lightroom does. And it actually does a nice job of straining the horizon but it had to bring back the iceberg, so I'm just gonna recrop one more time. All right, that's all I wanna do in Lightroom. Now I'm gonna send the photo over to On One, and to do that, I'm gonna to go to File, then Plug in Extras, and select On One Layers 10. And the reason why I'll do that is because I wanna create a smart layer, which I'll show you in a second. And so here, uh, because I'm sending it to layers, I have this option here to save the file as a smart photo, uh, which I'm gonna do by selecting Smart Photo. What this does is it creates uh, kind of a smart photo layer, and that's indicated by this gear icon right over here. You can turn that on and off by selecting the gear icon. The advantage of having a, the smart layer is that if I send this photo over to On One Effects or On One Enhance, uh, any changes I make afterwards will be recorded uh, so that I can come back in the future and adjust anything that I did. That's only if you have the smart layer enabled. If you don't, then uh, once you make your changes in effects, if you go back, those changes will be lost. So it's just one of those things that I really like. I use it all the time. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and send the photo to effects by clicking on effects from the toolbar over here. All right, now that we're here, I'm gonna start by adding a filter. Remember, I don't uh, use presets too often. I like to build my looks from scratch using the filters available. And the first one, I always use it, dynamic contrast. Now you can see here just the before and after, it's a bit strong. So what I'm gonna do is go to these uh, three sliders and I'm gonna just add nine to all of them. Uh, I find that to be a nice uh, kind of level for all three, the small, medium, and large details. But I'm also gonna bring the overall layer opacity to about 50%. So not only am I reducing the effect of the dynamic contrast, in the small, medium, and large areas of the photo, but I'm uh, reducing the overall effect uh, by 50%. And so that's, that's good there. Now I'm gonna hit Add Filter, and I'm gonna go over to the Sunshine Filter. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I wanna add a bit more of a, kind of like a color and warmth boost. So with that, I'm gonna take the Warmth slider, 
and I'm going to bring that over, let's see, yeah, about 15%. Uh, and that does a nice job of bringing out a little bit of a warm tone without it looking uh, too strong, I guess. But to accentuate it, I'm going to select on this gear icon and change the blending mode from normal to overlay. So here, this is a bit strong uh, for anyone, I would say. It's way too punchy. Uh, and that's fine because I'm going to take that opacity slider just like we did with uh, the dynamic contrast layer. I'm going to do that with the sunshine layer and I'm going to bring this down to about 30%. Yeah. So if we turn that on and off, you can see it's it's it does a nice job. It adds a, a color boost um, and a tiniest bit of a glow, um, but not much because I'm going to add, actually add a glow uh, in a bit. Now, I'm going to click Add Filter. And there's a filter that I used, I think, in episode one. I can't remember. But I, I've taken to using this more often uh, because, uh, it, especially when I have kind of a top third of my photo that's a, that's dark, doing this combination of using this filter, which is the lens flare filter, um, does a, a really cool thing with the sky. So the first thing I want to do is change the default preset from instant gold to upright. And then I'm going to change the color style down here, as you hover over, you can kind of change them. I'm going to select iris. Now, this looks washed out, but I can fix that by changing the blending mode. So again, the gear icon, I'm going to go to the blending mode, and I'm going to select soft light. Now, I like what the this effect is doing to the sky. I don't want it to apply to the foreground, so I'm just going to go to the masking bug here. I want to make sure that my shape is a gradient, and I'm just going to click right here. Now, the way this masking bug was oriented, uh, it's removing the effect from the sky and keeping it in the foreground, and I just want to do the opposite, so I'm just going to rotate this so that the sky uh, has the effect and the entire foreground, for the most part, is unaffected. And if I move my cursor, you can see, let me just turn this, see how it just does a really nice job to the sky and adds a little bit uh, of these warm ribbons, uh, which I really like. All right, so... Almost done, we're gonna add that glow filter that I just uh, referred to before. So I'll go to glow. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the, the standard um, preset here. I'm not gonna change anything just yet, but I will go to the gear icon and change the blending mode. I, I do this a lot. I do like to change blending modes a lot because I feel like it takes on a different effect altogether than what is presented uh, using the normal blending mode. So here I'm gonna go again to soft light and I'm going to back off the opacity quite a bit, uh, somewhere around maybe 30, 35%. Now, the glow is nice. I like it, but the pants are really getting crushed uh, with the shadows. So I'm going to take my uh, quick mask brush, and I'm just going to draw, I'll drop the brush size, and I'm just going to paint on the pants. And what's going to happen is um, the quick mask brush is just going to remove the effect from the pants. Uh, and so you can see here, the only thing affected here were the pants, they were restored back. Uh, and I think that looks great. So the last thing I'm gonna do is add a, the vin a vignette filter. I The stock, it's really subtle, but I love it. I don't touch it. You, you know, almost every time that I use uh, the vignette, I just add it and it's just this little touch. And I think it looks great. So. This is basically uh, the look that I'm going for. Let's start with our original. So this is our original photo. Um, the only thing we did here was correct for the white balance and we made some minor uh, tweaks to the brightness and the white and black points. And then we also cropped it. But uh, with effects, we were able to add a lot more of a punch, a lot more drama. It really brings the viewer in. And I love that Colby was wearing this blue jacket because it's, and also the kind of, uh, tan uh, f-stop bag because it brings a wonderful change um, for the eyes to snap to because for, if you look around everything is very uniform uh, for the most part it's kind of a dull or subdued blue uh, and then you've got some warm tone in the clouds here because with this is right around sunset but then you have colby with this really kind of uh, punchy colors uh, that adds a, kind of the anchor point for the photo so this is something that uh, I strongly recommend uh, you guys to do. Just play around with uh, blending modes and different effects to achieve these kinds of results uh, to, to add more impact to your photo. So with that, I want to thank you and I look forward to seeing you on our next episode of On One Inspiration.